Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining the webinar today, Apps for a Mobile Workforce, Finally That Elusive Win-Win. My name is Megan Atry from Pegasystem slash Antenna, and uh, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started today. Um, all of your lines have been muted to eliminate background noise. However, if you have a question, there is a Q&A or a chat um, portion that you can access via the GoToWebinar panel on your right side of their screen. Uh, when we get to the Q&A portion, you can submit questions there, and we will take them that way. Additionally, if you have a question or comment, you can tweet us at Antenna Software, and we'll respond that way as well. Without further ado, I'm going to toss it over to your host, Steve O'Brien. Steve? Thank you, Megan. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for joining us this uh, afternoon or morning, depending on your time zone. My name is Steve O'Brien. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Antenna Software. I am joined on the line uh, by Brian Philbin, a solutions consultant here at Pegasystem. Uh, and Brian has over 20 years of experience uh, in helping mobile workforces be more productive and efficient. So um, thank you, Brian, for joining us. Are you there? Yes, I am. We're not in the same room, in case nobody could figure that out. Uh, Megan and I are in the same room. Megan is the Global Communications Manager for Pegasystems. And for those of you that are confused, about antenna software and Pegasus systems and the multiple companies. We'll clear that up on the next slide. But our agenda today is pretty tight um, and action-packed and probably pretty brief. Uh, I don't anticipate this going a full hour, but we want to talk about mobile workforce enablement. What is a mobile workforce? What are the current issues affecting mobile workforces? Um, what, are, what are the ROI, the return on investment for mobile workforce automation or productivity tools? Um, what trade-offs do you need to keep in mind when thinking about and implementing solutions to enable a mobile workforce? And then we'll talk through some case studies uh, of customers that we've worked with successfully um, to help them improve their operations for mobile workforce. And then we'll talk about some suggested next steps for those of you that are interested in learning more. But the background I promised, Antenna software. Some of you may be familiar with Antenna. Some of you may be familiar with Pega Systems. Some of you may not be familiar with either one, so let's just clear that up right now. Antenna Software uh, has been in the mobility space since pagers were the, uh, the most advanced technology available. Um, Antenna has evolved over several generations of technology and now produces what's called an uh, uh, enterprise mobility platform um, that helps organizations to build, run, and manage uh, mobile applications across large enterprises. Last year, Antenna was acquired by a company called Pega Systems. Pega Systems is uh, a 30-year-old company that has experienced explosive growth in the last decade as more companies have adopted their business process management, or BPM, and CRM, or um, customer relationship management solutions. And you can see um, that Pega, uh, from this slide that Pega is about a half a billion dollar company last year growing very rapidly and um, serving the needs of some of the leading organizations around the world. Also, uh, just a few weeks ago, Forbes named Pega one of America's most trustworthy companies. And that really comes from Pega's laser-like focus on customer satisfaction uh, and customer happiness. And that's one of the areas where Antenna and Pega really fit well together is our, our um, are, are really tight focus on our customer success. And so Antenna Software is an independent business, business unit within Pega Systems. So hopefully that gives you the background. And we all work for the same company. Uh, it's just that sometimes we use the word Antenna and sometimes we say Pega. Um, but today we're here to talk about field service and apps for mobile workforce. And the little candle is an homage to our former colleague Jim Summers who used to start webinars by saying, Let's light this candle. So what is a mobile workforce? What qualifies as a mobile workforce? Everybody, uh, the, when you mention those words, it conjures up different images um, for different people. Most of us think of you know, the person who comes to fix the copier when it's broke. That's a, a field service technician or a copier repair person uh, is a perfect example of a mobile workforce. But it's really a, more, a much broader term than that. A mobile workforce, I would define as anyone who moves any team of people that move from site to site to accomplish their job task. Um, typically, they work with multiple customers or cases or issues in a, in a single day or a week. Uh, you know, a, a, 
a copier repair technician might do eight calls in a single day in a very small geographic area. You know, another um, type of technician might, might visit one customer per week because they got to get on a plane to go visit a customer. A very highly specialized uh, uh, field technician might have that kind of workflow. But in all cases, um, all those people follow a specified workflow to do all these things. Install, remove, fix, repair, replace, inspect, maintain, report. Anybody who's doing all these things out in the field, out of sight, we would, we would classify as a mobile workforce or a mobile worker. And it turns out that you know, all those things, uh, re repair, replace, inspect, all those things are, are pretty complicated. And field service or mobile workforce management is a pretty complicated area. Um, it's really about getting the right person to the right place um, most cost effectively and efficiently and resolving the problems or accomplishing their task uh, in a way that generates the highest level of customer satisfaction. Um, since Brian has a lot more experience in this area than I do, maybe I'll ask him to chime in on this slide. Sure. So I kind of break it down into two categories of things that I needed when I was in the field as a technician, which is visibility and velocity. I need visibility to the data. The back office folks need visibility into what I'm doing, what my state is as I'm moving through the status of different jobs. And they need that information as fast as I can get it to them, and I need the new information as fast as they can get it to me. The, the, the biggest challenge that we run into with field service or field workers is that we can't guarantee connectivity. So not only does this app have to work and it has to work at light speed, it also has to work either connected or disconnected without interrupting the field worker's job. They've got to be able to do their work whether they have a connection or not. So if I'm in a sub-basement working on a boiler, I need the application to be able to collect information and do everything that I need it to do, regardless of whether there's a connection there. And then when I pop up, back up you know, out of the, the underground bunker and get connectivity to the back-end system, it'll get updated back to the mothership so that that data is back to the, the, the back-end system in, in near real time. And this, this process is kind of where we really accelerate this, the, the ability for folks to be able to do their job transparent of the connection to that back-end system. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. Although I never knew that uh, boiler repair people reported back to a mothership, but that's, that's good to know. Y yes, they do. It's, okay, it's highly good. technical. Um, two, <laughs> two of the, uh, all of these issues have been, you know, all of the words on this slide have been issues in, in field service or, or for mobile workforces for a decade. Um, but two trends really are uh, at the forefront right now is social and mobile and um, field service teams are grappling with how to best deal with and best take advantage of you know the new developments in social and mobile and all you need to do is you know pick up uh, the latest issue of field technologies magazine and the cover story for the last two or three or four issues has always been um, about some company taking finding new ways to take advantage of mobile devices and the, the mobility revolution that happened, you know, starting with the BlackBerry, uh, starting with pagers, I guess, but uh, being accelerated through the BlackBerry and then even more so through the advent of more advanced smartphones uh, like the iPhone and Android devices um, have really enabled field service teams um, to greatly improve their productivity and to increase customer satisfaction to a large degree. So, you know, the biggest issues in, in field service or in, in mobile workforces are about, you know, not surprisingly, mobility. Um, and there's a good reason for that. Um, uh, advances, you know, whether, whether it's uh, software or mobile devices or new capabilities, it, investments in technology have proven to um, deliver huge value um, to mobile workforces. And Gartner recently did a survey, and it's, you know, it's called the Field Service Management Survey. Um, they only interviewed you know, a few dozen companies, actually I think it was three or four dozen companies, um, large enterprises, about their field service technology investments. And, but what they found was pretty um, consistent with previous surveys that they've done, and that is that you know, field service software or technology has a, has a pretty long history of delivering very high value. 
uh, and companies get a very fast and very high return on their investment when they invest in new technologies to help make their field service teams more efficient. But you might ask, where does it come from? And then, you know, this slide is a testament to, um, number one, overwhelming amounts of information in a very small space. Um, but don't get confused. I, I, I draw two conclusions from this slide. One is there are a lot of different areas. The, if you look down the left-hand side, there are 19 different categories um, that companies are investing in uh, in terms of technology for their mobile workforce or for their field service teams. And all of them have either current or planned investments over the next 24 months. So there's a lot of different areas fighting for attention and fighting for budget dollars. Um, the thing that stands out most to me is that mobile field service applications, um, even you know, seven or ten years into the mobile revolution, is still the number one um, leading area for investment. So 86% of companies are either have already invested or are planning to invest in the next 24 months. And even though half the companies already have some kind of a mobile app, almost 40% of companies are still planning additional investments over the next two years um, in mobile workforce management applications. So um, it is high on the mind of most field service executives that they've got to invest in the mobile capabilities for their workforce. And so you might say, well, you, you know, the ROI is fast and easy. Where's the ROI come from? Well, it comes from a lot of different areas. Um, and again, on this slide, there's a dozen different areas where the investment in technology can, can generate a return. The two most important are right at the very top. Um, and that's really, this is kind of the reason for the title of this webinar is we said finally that elusive win-win. Because investments in technology, um, they always produce some kind of a return. Um, and the goal of any good software company is to it typically falls into one of two categories. It's either help companies become more efficient, automate a tedious manual process, and make employees more productive. And what that helps is with the left side of the slide. It helps companies save money. And a lot of software just does that. It helps companies save money. And then there's another kind of software that helps companies make more money. It helps them find new customers. It helps them keep their existing customers more satisfied. It helps them upsell or cross-sell. Um, and improve customer satisfaction and improve their revenue per customer. Those, that category of software, I would call, they help companies make money. The interesting thing about mobile workforce automation software or mobile app is that it actually works on both sides of the equation. It helps companies save money by increasing productivity and efficiency, and it helps companies make money by making their customers happier and more satisfied and more likely to return. So it really works on both sides of the equation. How does it do that? You say, well, I can't, how does it do all, this thing, all of these things at the same time? We have a very good customer called Safelight. And actually, Megan has spent quite a bit of time uh, on site at Safelight over the last six weeks. So maybe I'll let her talk to the solution that Safelight's using. Sure. Uh, thanks, Steve. Yeah, so Safelight has uh, an application with us. It's called their mobile resource manager um, that their field technicians who go out who do repair and replacements in the field use. And it is tapped into their back-end systems that look at customer information and um, into scheduling and things like that. So the application itself provides a lot of efficiency and productivity gains for the technicians themselves. Previously, um, this is their latest version, which is uh, MRM3 for them, but they've been iterating on what they initially rolled out um, back in 2007 and building on it and improving it and involving their field technicians to look at ways to improve it. And, you know, they initially started with a paper-based process that would, you know, have repair technicians out there checking off different things and writing in full VIN code numbers on, uh, on the different vehicles that they were doing, having to write in 16 to 17 digit um, products for the urethane. They'd have to write down those codes in case there was ever a recall. Now all of that stuff is automated through the application. They're able to, to quickly look at what their work orders are. Um, so there's one dispatcher assigned for about 30 to 40 different technicians, and they want to be able to intelligently route people to the different jobs that they have in different areas. And technicians come in, they can get their work order, they can go to each one of their jobs, look at the summary of what it is, they get their materials for that, they can bring up all of the different information about that work order. It's also integrated to Google Navigation so that they can 
quickly kind of pull up the address and see what kind of route they can send. They also have the option to send an on my way text to their different, um, to the customer so that they are aware that the technician, you know, they obviously, they get, um, you know, when you call a cable company, you get that, you know, here's your window of time where you're coming through or they're going to be there for that service. But, you know, obviously Safelite does a really good job of servicing customers by narrowing that window where the technician can say, I'll be there in 15 minutes, I'll be there in 30 minutes, depending on what Google Navigation tells them is the, uh, is the drive time for them. Um, and it's also automated other things, like if they're doing a repair, it tells them, you know, what location and things like that. So the application itself has everything that, te that the technician needs for their day um, that's automatically built into it for them. So it's drastically uh, improved their productivity, made it a lot easier for them to have everything at the tip of their fingers um, that they would need as well. You know, it obviously includes customer signature and things like that. So it does a lot to help them save money. It eliminated, you know, hundred thousand dollars of, co of cost for paper um, and a lot of other interesting things as well for them on the cost savings side. On the making money side, uh, it does a lot to improve the service for customers. Um, one of the things is obviously kind of the customer signature. Customers can have their emails, uh, can have their receipts emailed to them versus having to kind of have something printed um, that they have to you know, carry around if they're out the office or something. Um, and they also do a lot uh, with looking at what customers need and are looking for to improve the service and what technicians have been doing to do that. So one example, if you see here on the right-hand side, um, there's a person uh, on, on a video screen, and this person is doing sign language, describing what the process for a replacement will be. Because typically when a, when a repair technician would show up, they would walk you through what the process is going to be. I'm going to remove this, these are the types of things that I'm going to have to do in order to do that. It's going to take about an hour. You know, do you have any questions? But there was a technician who had a customer who he saw was deaf, or he'd, I think he had him previously and knew that, that 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 customer was deaf. And so what he did was work with somebody in his office who he knew, knew sign language to have her sign out what that process was going to be. He video recorded it, and then when he arrived in the scene, played that for them. And when Safelight saw that, they decided to start to integrate that. So one of the things that they're working on moving forward um, is some different kinds of videos that look at different language options, that look at sign language and things like that to improve the customer experience. And what that does to make money for the organization is it ensures that your customers are happy with their experience, that they have a great service, and they're going to come back and they're going to refer other people to, you know, when I've got a broken windshield or something that needs a repair, I'm going to call Safelight again because I had a great experience in the first time. Perfect. So, thank you, Megan. That's a great explanation. So, not only does it make the field techs more efficient, but it helps keep the customers happier. Right. Perfect. So, obviously, lots of great advantage in mobile. It generates a fast ROI. It keeps your customers happier. It gets your mobile gets your field service team to be more productive and efficient. Um, but, you know, mobile's come a long way in the last 12 years. Um, but mobile's still really difficult. Um, companies struggle with mobility investments for lots of different reasons. One is that they've already got enterprise applications that run great on their, on their desktops and laptops or maybe even in a browser. They don't necessarily convert well to smaller mobile devices that, that are out and running in a disconnected environment, as Brian said, in the field. Um, they also have you know, early investments in mobility, um, and, but they don't want to keep spending more money uh, and taking more time to, to come up with new versions every time a new device, you know, a new iPhone comes out or a new Samsung Galaxy is released. Um, and so keeping up with the devices um, that their employees are using can be very challenging. And the, the mobile landscape, let's face it, it's, it's pretty fragmented. It's pretty out of control. There's lots of new, there's new devices coming available all the time. There are new platforms. Uh, available all the time. There are new versions of each of the platforms available all the time. It's just hard to keep up with. Um, you know, enterprises aren't typically great at developing and deploying applications really, really quickly. They typically um, are, are better equipped to produce high quality applications once in a while. Um, but the mobile landscape doesn't allow for that. Mobile, mobile moves fast and it requires people to keep up. And so when you talk to a mobile vendor, and um, believe me, Antenna is a mobility vendor, um, you, they, vendors typically want to talk about technology. And I, and I took this slide directly 
uh, from our customer facing sales deck, not because I want to talk to it or, or walk through it or explain it, but to actually to talk about when you talk to a mobility vendor, you typically start to talk about, oh, do you want a, a web app or do you want a native app or do you want a hybrid app and do you want to run on iOS or Android or Windows Phone uh, and what are the trade-offs of that and what kind of development tools are you going to use and what kind of mobile device management software are you going to use and, or mobile app management software and it gets very, very technical very, very quickly. And, and if you're running a field service organization, it's probably not the conversation that you want to have. Uh, and so if you're running a field service organization, the conversation can be a little bit more straightforward. There are basically two choices. There are packaged applications out there. There are companies who have been focused on the areas of productivity improvement for, for mobile workforces for a long time. They've built applications um, that out of the box uh, will employ a, a certain kind of a workflow and a certain process. And if you're happy with that process, you know, those customers are listed. Those vendors are listed on the left-hand side of this slide. You, you can buy a packaged application um, and adjust your process to fit that application. Or you can decide that your process is your secret sauce and that you want to build an application from scratch that mirrors your internal workflow or your internal process. And that's what we would call do-it-yourself. And that's where the technology conversation starts to happen. If you want to do it yourself, you know, is it going to be a native app or a web app? Is it going to run on iOS or Android? Or does it need to run across lots of different platforms? And what tools are you going to use? And how are you going to deploy it? And it, it, that, that's the conversation that can get a little bit complicated. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not a no-brainer decision. There are definitely trade-offs. I mean, they're not surprisingly. You know, the more flexibility and customization you want, um, the longer it takes to deploy, the, the, the higher the cost to maintain. Um, unfortunately, the line that you, you got to work along for that trade-off isn't, isn't the red line with a slope of one. Um, it's more like this, uh, this bluish line here that has a slope of less than one. There's, there's diminishing returns. Uh, as you continue to invest more time and more dollars, um, you do get more flexibility. But it's not a one-to-one -one, um, trade-off. Um, there, there is diminishing returns, absolutely, as you move up to scale. So here we'll stop and take a breath and just recap um, what we've talked about so far in this webinar. Um, it's pretty clear that investments in field service management have a very high ROI, very quick payback. Um, they help both improve customer satisfaction and improve operational efficiency. So they work on both sides of the make money, save money equation. Um, mobile, even though you know, we are well into the, the mobile age, mobile is still the number one initiative for most field service uh, organizations. And even though we are well into the mobile age, um, mobile is still difficult and can be costly to, um, to develop and deploy solutions. Um, and of course, as you add flexibility and customization, you definitely increase the cost uh, and the time of deploying these solutions. So just to get into the next step of this webinar, what, what we really want to talk about is a new way to deploy mobile workforce apps. And just so you know who you're talking to, Antenna, um, as I mentioned, has a long history in mobility. But it turns out the area where Antenna has the greatest um, domain expertise is in the area of mobile workforce productivity. And on this slide is just a, a, you know, a few of the logos um, of companies that we have worked with to deploy enterprise-wide productivity-improving mobile apps. And so when we talk about you know, a new approach that we've developed, it's not that it was developed in a conference room on a whiteboard. It, you know, it was developed in the field. It was developed by people that are doing this work day to day. And what is that new approach, you ask? Um, what we've developed now is something we're calling a mobile workforce app framework. And we're trying to address the challenge I, I talked about a couple of slides ago where you, know, you, you can either choose to get a really flexible uh, and customizable app or you can choose something that's out of the box and cheaper and easier. We want to try to deliver both of those things. We want an app that is, works out of the box, but is customizable and flexible enough 
for any company to use. And so an app framework is one approach to doing that. An app framework would be a mobile application, a mobile app that has most of the commonly required features and functionality that work right out of the box. But it's flexible enough and customizable enough to meet the requirements of almost any customer in almost any industry. Um, and we are currently right now in, you know, in the middle, I would say, of developing the first mobile workforce app framework. And, and I want to make it clear that it's a product that we're going to sell. We're going to bring to market this year. Um, it's not a demo. It's not a proof of concept. It's not you know, a throwaway app that, that we, we, we built just to show what our capabilities are. It's an actual product that we plan to um, launch later this year that will do things right out of the box. So it works like a packaged field service app. It provides you know, all the things listed here, secure login, and assignment list, and work items, and solution entry, and parts management, and time and expense. So all these things are there, and they work right out of the box. But it's not a packaged app because you know, what we like to say is it's 80-20 you know, or 90-10. It, it provides 80 to 90 percent of the most common um, features and functions that a field service uh, team would need, but it is completely customizable so that companies can add their own specific workflow or integrate to their own legacy back-end system or do, um, make, the, make the app framework do whatever else they need it to do that it doesn't already do out of the box. And so we're trying to solve that problem of you know, something that can be brought to market quickly and easily and cost effectively, but also be flexible enough and extensible enough to meet the needs of any organization. Brian, do you want to talk a little bit more, maybe um, expand on Steve's point about um, you know, the difference between kind of the package app and this framework approach and the benefits of that for field service organizations that are looking to build an application? Sure. Probably the biggest thing to take away is that a, uh, a application that's considered an out-of-box packaged application usually provides you with, the, with, with something they refer to as a configuration console. The configuration console's purpose in life is to allow you to do things like change labels, change logos, replace colors, you know, very basic stuff, and maybe add or remove or the screen, a screen that's there that you don't necessarily need. But it doesn't allow you to configure the application the way you want the app to work to match the way your workers work in the field. So we tend to take, as Steve mentioned, we have hundreds of customers in the field service realm that have from very simple processes to highly complex processes. We, we want those processes to mimic the field workers' work. We don't, don't want to add a burden of requiring them to learn how the application works to actually do their job. We want the app to look the way they work. So it's an outside in design. With our framework, what you do is you assemble the components of how you want the app to work. I need the customer signature, and I need it at this point in the workflow. I need the following business logic that says, if the person picks a solution code that says replaced part, I want it to automatically launch the parts process so that the technician doesn't have to go to the part screen manually. So through a framework, what we've done is we've built these base components, as Steve mentioned, work list, detailed work item. Those kind of things can be added in simply by connecting the screen processes and the workflow together using our assembly tool in PRPC. And then from there, all you've got to do is say, what else needs to be done? What specific business logic? What kind of integration to back-end systems do I need to do? Um, that's the 10%, the if you like, of tailoring that application to something specific to your organization that goes above and beyond configuring a pre-canned app that's got a specific set of steps. If your workflow has five steps in it and our out-of-box app has four, we can add another step. We can add all the business rules associated with it. It's all done through the assembly console, not through a process of getting a bunch of developers in a room and having them write code. Great. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. So, you know, this, this, this idea didn't just uh, appear to us one day magically. Um, frameworks has been an approach that Pega Systems has used for years um, as they build solutions for different vertical industries. And so 
you know, we, we talked about all the, the industries where PEGA has had success. One of the reasons for that is, you know, they have a framework for the insurance industry. They have a framework for the credit card processing industry. They have a framework for fraud detection. Um, frameworks um, help companies get applications built faster and more cost effectively, but provide them with the um, customizability or the flexibility that they need um, to, to map to their own workflow. So this is one of the areas where Antenna has, has really benefited from being part of PEGA systems is they've taught us how to build frameworks. I just wanted to close the webinar by talking about um, a few of, of the customer implementations that we have done over the years. Um, you know, I, you know, I put up a, a slide earlier with a couple dozen logos of, of the, the companies that we're proud to have worked with. Um, people often ask about, you know, more details about these implementations. And um, the details behind, uh, some of them are that Coca-Cola uh, is, is a customer, a long-term customer of Antenna. And if you, you know, you see the guys driving around in the red trucks delivering um, Coke to retail outlets, every one of them carries a device that's powered by Antenna. Um, and that device tells them what their route is for the day, what they're supposed to deliver, if there's any special, how things are supposed to be merchandised. Uh, and the, the back end application, the SAP on the back end, helps to optimize their route. The mobile device tells them where to go um, and what to do. And the mobile device also serves as a tracking mechanism so that people back um, at, at the disposition center can track uh, in real time where the, uh, where the truck drivers are. Yeah, and you'll see that they've um, Coca-Cola has had some great results as um, as benefits for this application, um, particularly um, as it relates to efficiencies around dispatching and the drivers themselves, eliminating uh, 2.5 million dollars in toll charges, um, a little over two million dollars in reduction in fuel expenses by routing people intelligently and looking at what makes the most sense for for what merchandisers to take what um, what jobs and a $5 million reduction in mileage reimbursement um, because it's all based off of that GPS system. So it saves some money there as well. So there's been some great ROI for Coca-Cola on this application. Perfect. And sticking with our beverage theme, <laughs> uh, another longtime Antenna customer is uh, Heineken in Ireland. And um, different from Coca-Cola, the, 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 the app that Heineken uses is actually for their um, technicians, they're inspectors who go around to the pubs to inspect the taps that dispense the Heineken beverages. A pretty good job. Pretty I think cool job. You. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so instead of um, um, you know letting these guys just drive around aimlessly, the the app actually it's a tablet-based app. Um, it tells them where to go. It tells them you know all the information they need to know about what equipment is is in this specific pub. When is the last time it was cleaned? Um, what spare parts might they need? Um, for this visit, it allows them to um, more efficiently and effectively service their customers so when they show up, they know exactly what to expect, they know exactly what needs to be done, they have the entire history uh, of the account of the customer in front of them on a tablet, and then they can enter information about what they did or didn't do in that visit, um, and that information obviously gets logged and recorded so that um, on their next round, uh, they have that information available to them. Perfect. And then the, la the last customer we'll talk about is Canon. And this is really, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier the, the copy or repair man. Um, you know, this is the prototypical field service app um, that connects to a, a, a Siebel backend CRM system. Um, and th this was actually Canon in Europe. Um, and it is the guys that go around uh, and inspect and repair copiers. Um, and we helped Canon to implement a program called OneService. Um, that they undertook because they recognized the need to, number one, provide better service to their customers. Um, we've all had the experience where the copier breaks and you call the repair person, they say, yeah, someone will be there on Thursday, and then you know, the person shows up at, at 5 o'clock instead of at 9 o'clock, or the person shows up on Friday instead of Thursday. Canon was responsive to their customer needs. Um, they knew that they could do better, so they built this app called One Service um, with Antenna, to help improve the effectiveness of their workforce, increase their customer satisfaction. Um, it's running today, it's live in the field, and it has had um, tremendous ROI, uh, both in terms of workforce productivity and in terms of customer satisfaction. So it really is the, the prototypical field service app.
Yeah, I think one of the nice things, Steve, about this is if you, you look at, um, you know, some of the business rules and things like that, that that Brian was talking about is, you know, the ability for the application to let field workers receive accept and process work orders. And if somebody doesn't receive, this is something that going back to its legacy days, Antenna has been doing for companies in terms of if somebody doesn't answer a service call or accept a work order, it can be routed after a certain period of time to somebody else so that that service for customers isn't degraded because the window changes, they can keep that service to the customer within an appropriate window for the customer by routing it intelligently to somebody else and saying, if this technician doesn't accept that work order after two hours or an hour or whatever, you could set yourself, serve it to somebody else so that that customer still gets the service that they need in a time that works, which keeps them on track with their SLAs and KPIs. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. So, you know, there's only so many webinars we can give, and there's only so much information that we can convey in a 45-minute in a webinar. Um, for those of you that are really serious about ex exploring uh, mobile workforce solutions or want to learn more about the best practices uh, in field service management, um, you know, we'd invite you to do what we call the mobile walkthrough, uh, where we provide experts like Brian who will actually come out and listen to your uh, business problem and try to relate to you the best practices of other companies we've seen who have had similar problems and solved them and help you to um, help guide you in the project planning process. Um, this isn't the, the mobile the mobile walkthrough is not a sales call. Um, it's it's not a sales rep showing up trying trying to sell you software. Um, we we have a, a specific expertise in a specific area that we've built over over a decade um, and we want, to share, we want to share that with companies, and yes, uh, sometimes it'll result in an opportunity to work together, and we appreciate that. So we would invite you to uh, uh, we'll follow up with everyone who's on this webinar with an email, and we'd invite you to reply to that if you're interested in learning more um, about anything we've talked about here or talking to any of the people who've talked on this webinar. Um, we're happy to follow up. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, if you have a question, you can submit it into the questions portion of the webinar uh, tool on the right-hand side. You'll see that uh, you can submit that, and uh, we'll answer them in the order that they've come. Uh, we have one that's in already, uh, Steve, which will be for you, which is um, you mentioned about the apps framework uh, and that it, we were working on the first rollout. What is the uh, timing for that to be available for market for somebody if they were interested in buying it? Uh, yeah, we're not saying we're not. Tying it to a specific date, I, I, it'll be later this year. Um, I, you know, not in December, but probably uh, not next week either. So it's kind of probably late summer um, that we'll launch that. We're actually demoing it right now. We just came back from the Field Service USA show or conference in uh, in California where we demoed the first release. Um, we have a big event next week called Pega World um, where we'll be demoing the second release. And uh, I would say, you know, shortly thereafter we'll. We'll decide whether it's ready for for general availability. We'll probably we will announce it with a press release, and and uh, uh, you'll be aware that that it's available later this summer. Okay. About Great. as specific as we can be. Very good. We'll allow uh, another minute just for any other questions that come through. I don't uh, see any others right now, but I'll give you folks just another um, minute or so to get those through if you do have any. Okay, so with that, we'll uh, we'll wrap the webinar up. If you do have additional questions, you can um, you can do you can you can send an email to antennainfo at pega dot com. Uh, you can also access that via our website if you're interested. And uh, as Steve mentioned, we'll send a follow up to everybody for this. The webinar is available for replay or download if there's somebody else on your team that you want to share it with, or you just want to listen to Steve again while you to sleep at night, perhaps. Uh, we'll send hey. a, we'll send around an email to everybody with a link to download that as well. Um, we did just get an email that, or a question that came through and said, what about integration with Pega PRPC? Yeah, integrate in, in the, the mobile uh, workforce framework app is completely 100% integrated. We actually built it with PRPC. Um, and obviously the, the person questioning is a either a Pega customer or knows Pega because PRPC is Pega's main product. It stands for Pega Rules Process Commander for those of you that are not as familiar with Pega. Yes. 
So she said, you mentioned only Siebel so far, so I think the question is, um, you know, does it integrate with everything? So I guess the yeah. question would then be, what sorts of backends does the app framework integrate to? No, that's a good question. The app, the app framework is built with PRPC, um, but like, like all um, Pega and all Antenna products, integrates with any legacy backend systems of record that the that customer might have. And um, I think we only mentioned Siebel in passing in one of the customer case studies because it was one example. Um, I, I also mentioned SAP during the Coca-Cola case study. Um, we integrate with just about any back-end system of record that a company has, and we've actually built special adapters and connectors that allow us to do that quickly and easily. So that, that's a standard part of the antenna product story and the Pega product story. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Okay. So with that, we'll tie things up, and as I mentioned, we'll send around uh, an email to everybody with uh, some contact information if you're interested in scheduling a uh, mobile walkthrough, um, and we'll also send around a link so that you can download the, um, the webinar for replay or the slides if you're interested in taking a look at those. Um, we thank you very much for taking the time and for joining us today. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Bye-bye.